In this video, we'll learn how to use a sensor and control sounds in pure data with the power of Arduino. Let's get started. This video is more about learning how to use these codes as tools rather than understanding them 100%. So you don't quite need to understand every little thing in this video, such as what's going on here for example. As long as you get the general idea and are able to follow along and successfully control sounds using sensors, then that will be more than enough. So relax, follow along, and have fun. Here's what we need. You need to buy a knob sensor, aka potentiometer, ones that you can directly plug into the breadboard. Wires that have plugs on both sides. Breadboard. And Arduino Uno. If you follow my previous tutorial, then all you need to buy is the Arduino Uno. You don't need breadboard in this video, but you can buy it while at it, because you will need it in the future. And if you want to use multiple knobs or sensors at once, then you'll definitely need it. Got all that? Perfect. The next step is to download the Arduino IDE. And don't worry, it's free. And download Pure Data, which is also free. Make sure you download the Pure Data Extended. And I have tutorials on this channel which you can check out. This is the software that allows us to program synthesizers and make sounds. Okay, let's connect the sensor to the Arduino. Whenever you get a new sensor, chances are all you need to do is go to Google and type the name of the sensor with the word Arduino and go to Image. In this case, search Potentiometer Arduino and go to Image. Before we begin, make sure your Arduino is not plugged into the computer just yet. Okay, for the non-breadboard viewers, connect the black wire to the top plug and red wire to the bottom plug. And whatever color that you have left over, in my case, white, connect that into the middle plug. And now, connect the black wire's plug into the ground or G and D socket on the Arduino. The middle wire to the A0, aka analog input number 0. And the red wire goes into the 5V or 5V, which is power. Okay, for the breadboard viewers, we can reference this one. I'll quickly explain how breadboards work. This row is used for power. So, we plug a red wire to the 5V on Arduino, and plug the other end to any of the hole in this row. Now, this whole row has the 5V running through it. And this row is used for the ground. So, plug the black wire to the GND on Arduino, and plug the other end to any of the hole in this row. Now, this whole row has the ground running through it. These two rows are isolated from each other. This portion of the breadboard works in this direction, and each row is isolated from each other. So, we should plug the knob in this orientation. Let's provide 5V to it. So, get another red wire and plug it into any of the hole in this row where the power is running through, and plug the other end to any of the hole in this row. Do something similar with the ground. Grab a black wire and plug one end into any of the hole in this row. And plug the other end into any of the hole in this row. And finally, the middle part of the knob can be directly connected to the Arduino's analog input. Because this isn't a video on introduction to electronics, it's out of scope to explain about voltage, current, resistance, and all of that. So, all you need to know is that you connect the sensor to the Arduino as shown in these diagrams. And when you interact with it, it sends out a signal from 0 to 1023, which can be read by the Arduino and sent to our computer. And we can use that value to control sounds. Okay, there is one thing that you should know. Never let the power, whether they are 5 volt or 3.3 volt, and the ground touch. This causes short-circuiting, which is bad. You'll most likely damage the Arduino if it happens, so please be careful and avoid it. If the rubber part of the red and black wires touch, that's okay because rubber is non-conductive. But if the metal part touch, or if the red and black wires are plugged into the same row on the breadboard, then we will short-circuit. 
As long as you avoid that, you'll be okay for the most part. And please note, you won't short circuit when the Arduino is not powered. Arduino is powered on when it's connected to the computer via USB cable or when it's powered with the AC adapter. So always make sure nothing is short circuiting before powering on. You could use multimeters to make sure things aren't short circuiting. But I don't want this video to be too long and our circuits are not complex enough to warrant the need for this tool just yet. I'll most likely talk about it in the future. So take your time and be careful when plugging things together. Great, the knob is connected to the Arduino. Let us connect the Arduino to our computer via USB cable. Next, open up the Arduino IDE. We need to use this software to tell Arduino to read the incoming analog signal that's coming from the knob and to send that value to pure data. Okay, we'll quickly go through this code. If this is your first time opening up the Arduino IDE, or let alone you're doing text-based programming for the first time ever, that's okay. For now, all you need to do is get the general idea of what this code is doing and be able to copy and use it. I do recommend that you go through Arduino tutorials after this video. Once you go through the for loop tutorial, you should be able to come back to this video and be able to understand what's going on much better. Here, we're initializing the variable that will hold our knob sensor value. And we're setting up our serial port here. 9600. This is what we need in order to communicate between Arduino and pure data. And this portion of the code loops for all eternity until we turn off the Arduino. This part right here tells Arduino to read whatever sensor value that is coming in to the analog input number zero, which is currently connected to the knob. And that value is stored into the knob value variable. Finally, that number is sent to pure data via the serial port. And this delay may not be necessary, but I have it here just in case. Okay, go to tools, then board, and finally to Arduino AVR boards and pick Arduino Uno or whatever that you're using. And then go to port and there should only be two things showing up there and you need to select the one that says Arduino Uno in parentheses and not the one that includes the word Bluetooth. Now upload the code. Did it upload successfully? Perfect. Okay, let's open up Pure Data. Create an object called COMPORT and type in 1 and 9600. That's the same serial number as the one in the Arduino code. And create three message objects. Devices, open, and close. And connect them like this. And create a print object and connect it here. Okay, now click on the devices message. It'll display the available ports. And we'll choose the same port as the Arduino. So we need this one. The number next to it in my case is 1. So add 1 to the message object open. If this number was 2 for example, then I need to change this to open 2. The final step is just add these objects. If you know about serial port communication, then you'll have a better understanding of what these objects are doing. I don't want this video to be too long, so it's just magic. And we need a number object here. Okay, for the moment that you all have been waiting for, click open to start the communication between Arduino and Pure Data. Okay, twist the knob. Does the number go from 0 to 1023? Awesome. If it doesn't, don't worry. Please be patient and take a closer look at these codes again. And also make sure your electronics are wired correctly. If you're still having issue troubleshooting, then please feel free to comment below or DM me. Okay, now that we successfully see the knob sensor value in pure data, we can map it to synth parameters and do all kinds of exciting things. We can map it to a filter. Volume. FM synth. And more. Again, I have pure data tutorials on this channel that you can watch. So go experiment and have fun. 
This closed message right here will stop the communication. This is necessary to do whenever you want to change your Arduino code and upload it. If you forget to hit close, then you'll encounter an error like this. And once the code is successfully uploaded, then you can click open again. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this is the coolest thing that I experienced ever, and it will be even more amazing if I can use more than one sensor at once. That is a great point, and we can actually do that easily. Click the close message in pure data, and then let's go back to Arduino. So this is the code that we need if we want to do multiple sensors at once. Even if you're only using one sensor, this code will still work for you. So we're using Array. For Arduino Uno, we can use up to six sensors at once. And we have a for loop here that will quickly read through all the analog inputs one by one and then send the values to pure data. This space string right here will separate individual analog input values. And we need this serial print line here to make it all work. And upload the code. Then disconnect the USB cable so that we can add another knob. You can connect another knob in similar fashion as before. For this one though, connect the green wire to A1 or analog input number 1 so that we have two separate knob values being read. Okay, connect the USB cable again. The code is already uploaded into this Arduino, so we can go back to pure data. And we actually only need to add one thing here. This will unpack individual sensor values separately. So you can have six Fs total here. F meaning float number. Okay, click open. And we should see two different knob values now. So let's try something like this with an FM synth. We can map one to modulation frequency and the other to depth. And we did it! We successfully controlled a synthesizer using sensors. What's next? Well, we can use other types of sensors. For example, a light sensor or ribbon sensor. And we can also learn how to use digital components such as buttons, which we'll be doing in the upcoming video. And I'll be making videos about instrument design concepts, so please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in using this new skill set to build your very own one of a kind instrument. Okay, have fun and see you in the next video. Bye.